Hi, and welcome to another Tabless Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today, I wanted to look at this. This is thinking about bluebells and spring and using the IKEA stand. I'm sorry, guys, we don't have any more stands available, but um, you know, hopefully, maybe you've got one already. And making a kind of beautiful bluebell wood that you can enjoy during spring and have this in a stand. So today, I'm going to show you how to make this. So I've cut a load of pieces of white, um, this is um, uh, uh, 113 white um, and now I'm just going to decorate them like so they uh, look like silver birches with black enamel. So I'm just painting little marks on the white to look like tree trunks. Mostly it's just lines but you can just do little circles like that as well. Gives the feeling of silver birch tree trunks. They are my favourite trees, I love these. So I've just got a piece of tech to here, which is like my hilltop in the background. I'm just going to put some powders down. Yeah, you could have used, you know, I could have used a green piece of glass, but tech is cheaper. And also I don't mind a bit of a kind of translucency to this. Um, I think it can work quite nicely. Um, saying that, I'm going to make sure I go kind of thick on the powders because I do want it looking green. I've got my first layer of um, glass down and I just want to kind of think about, you know, creating some feeling of fields. Now I haven't got uh, any um, glass underneath. Last time I did this on another project, I put a colour down and then I did it afterwards. But I'm just going to think about it like this. And then maybe we think about this field is running. And then I'm going to put some other colours on top. Um, in the kind of different areas. Um, which I'll kind of mask them off. I want to kind of create some hedgerow effect. So I need to sort of think about the other colours I'm going to put down. I've got some light green here. Um, I'm going to mask this off and put my kind of light green down. I then want two different fills here. I'm just going to use this. In the drawer over here, I've got some magic brown. I'm going to use a bit of that. It's pretty green, so I think mostly it'll be green, but it might have a bit of reaction in it as well, which will go kind of more browny. Um, I'm going to just again. Just use this bit of paper to mark in my fields. I've gone a bit funny at the end here, but oh, I've really. But maybe this one's a bit of a more hodgepodge. And I can use a bit of um, frit on here to make it a bit neater afterwards. I've got some mineral green I'm going to lay down here. And then use some of my magic brown over here again. Remember guys, using powders, use your masks. And I'm just using a piece of paper to make it look like it's ploughed. I mean, you know, maybe I should put some brown on, but I want it to be quite nice and bright and green, spring greeny colours. Um, it's only going to be seen through the trees, so it's not 
like it's sort of front and centre. Building a bit of this is pea pod. It's like the hedgerows. I'm gonna find something a bit darker as well. So that was people that have died putting down. I've got some olive. I'm going to just put some olive. It looks still pretty light, but it is a bit darker. Um, and do some crusty eventually into, into. This is very much darker. Just going to go across the middle of this one as well. I feel it needs a. More of a hedge on it, um, and I'm just going to use some mineral green just here as well. So, um, and because I just like adding kind of another colour, I'm just going to use a little bit of this is um, a fuchsia down the bottom here, and maybe in this field here. I'm um, going to add a few, um, my sheep, obviously, in this field. And yeah, I know the sizing isn't quite right, but there's a bit of artistic license that goes on here. And then my sheep and their lambs, because it feels like it's spring and the lambs are and with the sheep in the fields. Um, and I'll probably put some spring flowers on and then that is ready to go. So I've added some yellow flowers here. Now I've just realised I don't want to put them as close to the bottom of that because the bottom bit goes in the slot. So I'll just move them up a bit. Um, and as well here, I probably need to get tweezers to do this. Um, but I'll add a few more little flowers on. Just um, it's nice. Again, I know the sizing isn't quite right, but it's nice to have a few flowers in, in a piece like this. And then this can go in the kiln. So here is the kiln shelf set up, guys. I've already set up because I needed to try and work out how to get it all on. My hillside will go here. Um, uh, you can see I've cut some, um, this is mineral green, which is kind of the, the floor of the forest. And the, the front one, I wanted to do a piece like this, which is a kind of the bluebell in the foreground. Now I've just got these together because I really wanted to make sure I kind of got strength, but still kind of feeling like a, um, a bluebell mix. I'm just a bit of glue down. Um, and now I just need to sort of put the bluebells. I've got them here. We put a stick, a bit of fibre paper, stick a bit of glue in, and some fibre paper to get them to um, to keep their shape. Now I'm going to have to make sure that I really tuck them close because this is an experiment. I'm not sure this will work. I'm hoping it will, um, but uh, if we don't have this, we have the tree, the trees, you know, the rest of the trees in it um, but I'm hoping I can get this kind of in the forefront bigger bluebell to work by putting lots and lots of bluebells on it but if I make it too heavy we're going to have problems as well so uh, I'm hoping I've got the strength here to carry the weight of the bluebells on top so I'm going to just quickly do this and then we can move on to the trees. So here it is. I'm also going to just put a little bit of um, frit on the kind of um, this area. I've got to again be careful not to go near the bottom here because it will mess with the, um, the thickness. But if I can just get a little bit, I'm going to use my mosaic nippers to um, <laughs> it's not working. Uh, just to. Do this here just to give it a little bit of um, feeling of kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I just want a bit, a bit of texture there. So um, that, this is now ready to go in the kiln, and we can move on to looking at the trees. So here are these. So I'm literally just taking a little bit of glue 
Um, they're going to sink down. I am aware they're going to sink down. I don't mind that. That's sort of going to be, you know, how it will look. Um, I'm going to add some um, other things on here. So I've got, I want to add a bit of bluebells, um, smaller bluebells like these are in the background. I'm going to be, I haven't got very much space and I've got to be pretty careful that I don't go below this line. So I'm going to put some fibre paper here just so I've got an area to build it up. So here I've got kind of one, um, I'm just going to take, you know, that's why sometimes having shorter stringers can be useful. Let's take a bit of stringer short. Um, this is on that here. And then just add my bluebells now. I'm concerned again, rather like the other bluebell, that we're getting it all to stick together. Um, sometimes you think of projects in your head and then actually coming to make them and you're like, oh, how do I expect this to work? But we'll make it work. So I'm going to do that and then I'm actually going to put another stringer on top to give it extra um, strength and also to give it something for all, all to tack together with. I just need to use um, some glue and like so. So I'm going to do that for all of these. I'm just going to kind of put one little blue bell on each one and we'll go from there. Cool. So here it is, I'm ready to go in the kiln. So guys, we've used the trees as kind of um, building up the, the, the um, bluebells against the trees to give it a bit more strength, because this one really worried me, but if we use the trees or go across the trees, then hopefully they would have enough strength to, um, to, to kind of hold together. I'm hoping this experiment works. I think it's gonna be so pretty if it does. So here, this is all ready to go in the kiln and we can have a look at how it is when it comes out. So here it is, out of the kiln. I put it straight in the frame from um, in the stand, straight out of the kiln. It just, uh, yeah, it's very fragile. <laughs> it's it's a project that it looks fantastic. I absolutely love it, but um, it wouldn't be one that I'd want to pack and send anywhere. So this is with the light on. It looks really pretty. I, having made it, now decided that I'm not so keen on my sheep in the background. I think it's nicer on its own with just the trees. Um, so you can have a think. Do you, want the, the, do you want the sheep in the background or do you just want the um, bluebell wood? And it doesn't, you know, you don't have to do this with bluebells. You could do this with any flowers at all and um, make a little forest. It works really well. I had one tree, I'm trying to find where it is, where it slipped a little bit. And this is literally hanging off this bit here. It's so delicate that, yeah, you know, I'm like, hmm, I don't know how long that will survive. But um, it's a lovely piece. It's really, really pretty. And I think it's a, kind of just, it's a totally different take on using this stand and making it into a little kind of forest. Yes, you could add um, leaves at the top. I haven't. I quite like the whole idea of just sort of the no leaf thing and just feeling like you're looking through the branches um, into the background. I do love my silver birches. I hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video. Please make sure you can see below if you go into more in comments, you can get links to our um, pages and to lots of information there about uh, all the kind of products being used here and where to find them and additional information we love to provide you. Um, please make sure you go to our website, tablethisglassemporium.com to get all your products you need to make this project. And also subscribe to our newsletter, like this video, share this video, comment on this video, do all the things that we need to do to make sure that we can carry on sharing our projects with you. Until next time, happy fusing.